pursuing with the What's New in Rhino 6 for Mac video series. In the Modeling and Editing section, we will now talk about history enhancements in this new version. For those of you not familiar with history, it consists of a mode that is enabled up at the top in the Modeling Aids bar. It creates an association between input geometry and the geometry generated off of it for any of the history enabled commands in Rhino. Let's take a look. I'll go over to the Surface Tools, run the Revolve command, revolving my curve into a surface. Since History was enabled, and Revolve is a History enabled command, there's an embedded association between the shape of my parent curve and the resulting child surface. Any edits I make to the curve will affect the shape of the surface. Most surface and transform tools, as well as some curve and solid tools in Rhino, are history enabled. For full list, check the help file. For more detailed information on history, check the comments. We will be posting a link to a video centered around this topic. Let's focus back on the history enhancements in Rhino 6. Most of the commands that have been added or have been history enabled in Rhino 6 are advanced surfacing tools, such as the match surface command. These will allow us to perform advanced surfacing techniques and details that would have otherwise been complicated to achieve. In this example, I'll run the match surface command, which will match a surface edge to another surface edge, or in this case, to a curve. Now without getting into the details of the match surface command, I will deactivate the match edges by closest points and activate refine match. This way, my input surface, which had a very simple control point structure, can match the more complex structure of my input curve. Then, I'll just validate. The history warning I get is announcing that I've broken history between the original curve that allowed me to revolve the surface and the revolved surface. Yet, now I have built a new association between my input curve and that same surface, allowing me to edit it and have my whole vase follow along to adapt to these new changes. This can be a very powerful tool for form finding and generating shapes that would have otherwise been complicated to achieve. Let's continue with another example of the match surface command, mixing it up with another new command in Rhino, the move extracted isocurve command. Here I have a generic looking handle shape. The red surface represents a protrusion or detail that I would like to flow into my original handle surface. As you may know, Rhino has tools that allows you to obtain curves from surfaces. So moving down to the curve tools and into the curve from objects toolbar, I will run the extract iso curve command. I will create an iso curve on my handle beyond the red surface, say around here. Now with history always enabled and over on the surface tools, I will run the match surface command again, matching my input red surface to my extracted iso curve. But before, I will check the new option curve near surface. What this does is add a prompt to select a surface on which my ISO curve lies, and enabling the continuity options such as tangency and curvature. First, I will deactivate refine match and activate match edges by closest points. And then selecting tangency or curvature will force my red surface to adapt not only to the extracted ISO curve, but the underlying surface with a tangency or curvature continuity. I can also play around with the ISO curve direction options. For the moment being, I will select automatic and validate. If I check in rendered mode, I will see that my detail 
is flowing down into my handle surface. Now, to have even more control over the shape, I will go over to the new V6 tab and run the new Move Extracted IsoCurve command, which is also history enabled. This command will allow me to move my IsoCurve that is lying on my surface. Forcing the red surface to readapt to the blue surface in tangency continuity, which is what I had originally selected during the match surface process. This way I can fine tune even further the result that I want. These new options in Rhino 6 allow me to create advanced details without having to create dummy surfaces as I would have in previous versions of Rhino. So let's move down to the Blend Surface command. Blend Surface, just as its twin command, Blend Curve, is also history enabled. Let's go over to the Surface Tools and run the command. Blend Surface allows me to select two input surfaces and build a third one that I can adapt in shape and continuity interactively using the dialog box. Now the cool feature in Rhino 6 is that it's also history enabled. So running the command again, I can enter edit mode, select the blend I want to edit, and access the dialog box again, allowing me to change any of the settings or even the handles. Once done, we can validate our way out of the command.